Hello there, kids. It is I, Stray Cat, the one and only, coming to you with the first episode, again, of Stellaris Console Edition. Now, when we left off, the game was very different from what it currently is right now, so... We're going to relearn a few things. As you can see, I got all the DLC that's currently out installed. We'll see if uh, anything more needs to be done later on. But currently, I have everything. Now, uh, we're going to do the same thing again. Um, we're going to have Imperial Service of Ladle sidelined for this time around. Uh, and we're going to have Galactic Empire of Laxi. <laughs> It's another streamer gal I semi-simp for. But that's not the point. Um, <laughs> I also call her a furry, which she basically is. But that's, again, not the point. Uh, we're going to have her uh, be possibly allowed in instead of constantly going to be in. Uh, we're going to still do the Empire of Felinae. Uh Planet will be Felon Day. I switched the names around, made a little more sense that way. Uh, the Advisor Vice will be the Soldier, which is one of the DLC things. And a lot of things have changed. A lot of things. So basically, you're going to be relearning as I run. Uh, I already know most of the new mechanics as they go, and some of the new things that will pop up during our adventures as learning how to be. Well, uh, an empire. <laughs> but that having been said, onward we go. So, yeah, let's do it. Uh, let's go with a large one. Uh, elliptical. Sounds good to me. I don't know if I want to go with eight empires. Uh, let's go with six. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good to me. It's a nice even number. That sounds good to me. Um, what else can we do? Uh, let's not have any advanced AI starts. That's going to get annoying real quick. Two Fallen Empires is entertaining enough. One Marauder Empire. Uh, up the habitable worlds a little bit. Just so I have a higher chance of finding some. Uh... Uh, primitive civilizations, uh, more likely to find primitives. I want to be able to uplift possibly a few of them or uh, destroy a few of them. Depends on how it goes. But uh, yeah, crisis strength, just normal. Let's keep it at a normal strength for right now. Uh, mid game start year where it happens in the mid area of the game. Let's up that a little bit. Eh, let's up that to about 2,500. That sounds good to me. And then we'll put the end game at 2,750 and do the victory year at 3,000. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good to me. Uh, another thing. Another thing I should mention. Um... Some of you see those years and go, oh boy, uh, Xbox One is going to chug a little bit near the end, isn't it? Uh, that would be the case if I was running this on the Xbox One. Uh, I'm currently running this on the Series X. That is what we will be recording on from here on out. So, uh, honestly, I've tried older files where the years were a lot further along. Doesn't chug. Doesn't chug nearly as badly. Um, the beginning of the game will go fast. So there's always that. But late game will be a little mellow. A little mellow, a little running through the... Sh running through the shtick, <laughs> for lack of a better phrase. And, uh, yeah, it should be good. I think it should be good. Uh, difficulty captain. Uh, what's the weakest? <laughs> Cadet. Okay, ensign, captain, commodore. Admiral, Grand Admiral. Oh boy, I'm not going to do that. Let's go with Captain. Let's stay at Captain for right now. Scaling difficulty? Nah, nah, don't need to hit scaling. Much rather have a... If I hit a point of power, I'd rather keep it that way, you know? 
make myself absolutely unstoppable. <laughs> Just keep it that way, you know what I mean? Yeah, anyway. Um, AI aggressiveness, normal. Empire placement and clusters. Sounds good to me. Uh, advanced neighbors. Nah, let's not. Let's not. Hyper lane density. Um, I'm kind of on the fence about this one. Um, I could have it be normal. I could have it up a little bit to 1.5. But it. the higher it goes, the less likely I'd be able to create choke points in my empire. Where the only way some empires, if they want to attack my empire, have to go through these systems in order to get to further systems further out and i can just solidify my defenses at those particular points then they have no way to get into my empire that's what i would try to do but the higher the hyperlane density is the harder it is to have a choke point especially if your neighbors are moving quickly and are make it unable for you to create one so let's go with 1.25 for right now. Um, abandoned gateways. Uh, I'll keep these up just to, just to add a little bit of challenge because they can use those to circumvent uh, my current uh, my current empire uh, defenses. So we'll give them that. We'll give them that. But uh, hyperlanes, I'd rather keep it a little on the low side. Uh, wormhole pairs. Uh, yeah, we can do that. I, I feel like that's a good idea. Yeah, multiplies the standard number of wormhole pairs that will be generated in the galaxy. That also provides a little bit of that sort of wild factor. And, uh, oh, they have this way to get around my defenses. I, I'll kind of give them that. Uh, guaranteed habitable worlds. Let's keep that at two, so that way I have a chance of expanding... Uh, the colonies a little bit as it is. Iron Man mode, as always, going to be on. So that way you can see me getting achievements for the very first time in this game. Have not gotten a single achievement yet. In the first two episodes we did of this series, prior to the revamp and the re... Uh, <laughs> Reconjiggering? I guess that's a word? That I can use? Uh, the refiguring, reconfigure, re I don't know. I'm making up words. Uh, didn't get any achievements prior to that. But uh, this time, we're uh, going to play for achievements. And also make it difficult as fuck on me. <laughs> because if anything happens, I gotta live with it. <laughs> so that's going to be fun so had to have a sip of tea there all right let's go let's start that loaded significantly faster than the one may i add okay other sip because i felt like i wanted it in the eons since the first primitive felon communities took shape in the meadows and forests of Felande, our civilization has spread and prospered. Countless nation-states formed as we advanced through the technological ages, warring against each other until one remained. Although the fighting was often brutal, those who survived nurtured a martial, martial blah, 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 tradition that has pre prevailed to this day. I can talk, really I can. Now, after the discovery of the Hyperlane Network, the finest minds of the Empire of Felinae have finished development of the first hyperdrives. The stars themselves are finally within our grasp. Let's see where we're at. Schmel's World. Oh! Schmel's World is our moon. Okay, cool. And we haven't tapped it yet? Why? It's silly. It's silly. Why wouldn't you tap the moon if you can? Ooh, Durkheim is a nice little uh, energy provider, as is Eterpe. That's a hell of a name. All right. Palina, Noricum, and the planet Stray. 
sounds good to me. All right, that's our current system. It's a binary star. I was kind of hoping for two, but... Uh, it's a singular star, not a binary or trinary system. Uh, but, yeah, that's what I meant to say. But words are hard. Let's open up. And where are we in the galaxy? We're close to the middle of the ring. Okay. All right. Kind of forces us against this edge here, but allows us to spread out this way and everywhere else, possibly. It sounds good to me. All right. So we are looking at currently 10, 10, 11 resources that are being brought in. This is trade value on the uh, far right side there. That's what we're looking at. Uh, everything else is pretty straightforward. Uh, energy, minerals, physics, uh, research, and society research. Now you see the top bar. That got a little more complicated than it was in the previous uh, iteration, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, you got the energy, minerals, and food, of course. But then you have consumer goods, alloys, uh, strategic resources. There we go. That was the word. Influence unity and research research has been basically crushed down into this one here this one tab that you get a good look at all of it and then you have the empire sprawl with how wide it is and your administrative capacity yeah, once you pass the administrative capacity everything becomes more expensive but only just a little bit uh, it gets worse and worse as time goes on, especially if your administrative capacity doesn't keep up, which generally you're not going to be able to. Just don't even bother worrying about that. The costs will come, but you will survive them. Uh, Empire systems, we own one star system and one colonized system, which is our home system and our home planet. There's our colonies, which is our home system, of course. The population starbase capacity star bases have changed uh star bases are no longer uh let me rephrase that because quite frankly i forget how the old star bases work <laughs> it's been so long uh the old star bases you had to were your basic limit on how far your empire could go uh now these are how many advanced bases you can have uh, outposts are what you can have in a singular system a star base is what you build that outpost into and that will become a star base and that will tick a counter on that capacity uh, that capacity will grow as time goes on as your system gets larger and that will be easier to keep up with generally generally it's easier to keep up with your naval capacity, enough said, how many ships you can have. Your influence drastically is different this time around. It doesn't cost influence to buy people, instead it costs energy. Energy is actually the monetary systems in the game. Influence is basically everything else. Uh, political clout, basically, um, as it says in the description. It'll recruit leaders. It used to recruit leaders. <laughs> it doesn't anymore. Don't know why they didn't change that. Uh, building frontier outposts and dealing with factions. Hopefully they fix that other part because it doesn't recruit leaders anymore. That's out of the that's out of the picture entirely. Um, there is multiple other things that have changed. We'll go over that as time goes on. Alloys are the advanced resources with military application. They are what is used to construct ships and star bases. Uh, that is a little harder to keep up with. <laughs> um, I found, at least until the end, where you're basically gaining it hand over fist. Uh, consumer goods is the advanced resources that represents the various gadgets, luxuries, and goods necessary to give your populations a good life and perform intellectual jobs such as research. Uh, basically, uh, when it comes to the whole 
what's the word I'm looking for? The whole... And it's hard to say unless you have it right in front of you. <laughs> so, we'll, we'll save the other stuff for now. Uh, food, minerals, and credits is obviously the same thing. Is all the same, basically. And makes a lot more sense when you get into the thick of it. Which I should, actually. First, let's set up... Oh, I was hoping for a genius or a maniac. Her a maniacal, uh, uh ba -da -ba -da. scientist. That's what I was hoping for. That's also the word I was looking for. But it's fine. It's fine. I'll live. Maybe. <laughs> uh, we have William Stark as our governor. Sir Nigel Pemberton II uh, commanding the Wanderer. I don't know where that name came from. <laughs> I don't know, but hey, I'll take it. Uh, Jamal Tarani for engineering, Manuel Salazar for society, and Yun Shen for physics. Sounds good to me. Now let's get them actually started on something. Uh, hmm. Field modulation, global energy management, or fusion power. All of them would be good ideas. Fusion power would go towards our ships. Global energy management would help with all of our planetary uh, power capacity and field modulation would go a long way in producing how much extra energy they can do. To be fair, field modulation is cheaper, so I'm going to go for that. And let's see. Hydroponics farming, genome mapping, and planetary unification. Uh, the monthly unity would be nice, especially this early on. Genome mapping would be very good for planetary population growth uh, early on as well. And hydroponics, I could take it or leave it, honestly. I mean, it's not really necessary if you plan ahead with your planets. Uh, it's, only, it's only necessary if you pick a bad planet uh, to continue on your spread across the galaxy so let's go with planetary unification for now and jamal what shall, what shall we have you do standardized corvette patterns afterburners or geothermal fracking um generally you never have a problem with gathering minerals so you can put geothermal fracking on the back burner back burner uh speaking of burners after burners you kind of unless you want to have a lot of speed on your ships which if you're focusing on weapons it's not really necessary uh standardized corvette patterns that actually would be very useful uh really early on because it would allow the speed and the cost to be greatly in your favor when building more ships. So let's go with that. Let's go with that for now. And... Ooh! I'm adding extra to research Emperor Tomas. Let's see. Um, expansionist Charismatic. Okay. So I don't have to I don't have to worry about costs for making outposts and star bases. Good. And edicts cost less and last longer. Cool. And scientific leap. Oh, that explains it. Okay. So we're we're doing good at least on at least when it comes to research. I don't have to worry about having a uh, spark of genius or a maniacal scientist this early on. It would help at some point but i don't have to worry about it right now because my speed on research will be lightning fast so i don't have to worry about that too much warrior culture army damage is up um our entertainer jobs are replaced with duelists and duelists turn alloys into unity amenities and naval capacity so when i in 
institute buildings that will create duelers. That is where that will go. Distinguished Admiralty. The Admiral level cap is already plus one. The fleet command limit is plus 10. And the ship fire rate is plus 10%. Uh, fleet command limit. That brings me to another thing. You know how fleets. Fleets is now this. Uh, you cannot make one big all-powerful fleet of all the ships in your empire and they just float around doing whatever. Like I would have done. <laughs> anyway, uh, now you have to have fleets. Uh, there is a limit to how many ships can be in that fleet as much as there is a limit in how many ships you can have total. So, currently our limit on fleets exceeds our limit on ships. That will eventually change. And the ship designer brings us to here where I can then make only a corvette and defense platform the adaptations you can do on construction ships uh, science vessels colony ships all of that has been taken out i wish they would put it back but it is what it is uh i would personally add more shields and whatnot to those things but that's not within my uh wheelhouse is it <laughs> i'm just the one that plays the game so what we can do, what we're actually able to do, is change these ships as much as we really want to. Uh, got the defense platforms, which can have different sections thrown on. We can have the heavy section, uh, the missile section, the heavy missile, and then point defense and light. So... Medium station allows for two different weapons. Missile station allows for two different missile types. You will get more missile types. Uh, missiles are now relegated to their own slot rather than a slot of small, medium, large weaponry. Uh, you can only add lasers and mass drivers to the other slots. It's all that you're allowed. And uh, when it comes to this, you get shields, you get armor, and that's about it. And a reactor booster. That's an added component that you can throw on there right now in the first part of the game. Where you boost your power and thus damage shields, uh, all of that. Shield recharge, rather. All of that. That's all you can do, really. Uh, that's only currently. That will change as time goes on. And we're going to select auto upgrade. So uh, it'll auto upgrade the ship schematic to the next available upgrade should we get it. And then from there, then we have to upgrade everything that is currently out there. But then it'll be upgraded. I don't have to worry about it anymore. So. We'll change this to the lion. There we go. The lion class defense platform. Because I am a cat-oriented nerd. That is known. And the North Star class corvette. We're going to change that almost immediately. To the lynx class corvette. There we go. Perfect. We're going to hit that auto upgrade immediately. Now corvettes... We're going to keep that as a picket ship. Uh, because later on when we build our fleet with all the other ships, picket ships will be useful. Uh, we will change one of these to a red laser though. And we're going to change this to armor because boy do they need armor. Holy fuck. Oh boy, they always hurt. They always hurt. At least in the early, uh, early spots. Later on it's usually, funnily enough, destroyers that get destroyed a lot. That's kind of funny, given their name. But, uh, reactor booster to get more power in there, to add to their evasion, uh, damage, combat speed, all of that. And now we'll save the design. We'll delete the North Star version. And that will be that. And this is where you can also change 
a number of things. You can change the name of it, which, give me just a moment and I shall do that. There we go. And you can also change if they take point in any uh, skirmishes where they're leading multiple or not. You can change their leader. You can change their fleet stance, which is going to be aggressive. Always be on aggressive. Because then it'll automate the process for you if there's enemies nearby. You can then upgrade them, which I'm going to have to do now because I changed their design. And then you can change how many of them you have in your fleet. I will up it to 10, and that's as far as I will up it for now. And then I can reinforce it, so that way it brings that number of ships in that fleet all the way up to 10, should I have the resources. Currently, I do not yet. Uh, so I'm not going to touch that for a while. I am going to upgrade them, though. I'm going to upgrade them to the new schematics, so I don't have to worry about that. Society, all of these are still in place, and then you get Ascension perks on top of that. Ascension perks are things you get after you complete any of these tables here. And then your Ascension perk is a powerful bonus that you have on your species. It's pretty cool. Uh, planet and sectors, let's change that to a balanced focus under William Stark of Felinday. And the expansion planner, if you've explored planets, uh, if you've seen planets in any way, shape, or form, you can see if it's possible to colonize them or, you know, what have you, what you can do with them. Um, that covers much... Oh, mom, claims, claims, claims. Claims is if you want a particular star system and it's not under your control, you can say, hey, you, bitch, that's mine. I want that. That's mine now. I say it's mine. Give it to me. They don't have to give it to you. But should you go to war with them, that's going to become yours if you win. Just saying. But that's for later on. Other than that, situation log is relatively the same. I'm, I'm the number four. Why am I number four? That's a little higher than I expected, considering there's six empires here. I'll take it. Um, contacts, we're the only one here in this universe that we know of. And yeah, we can't do much else. Can't even really make anything here. Oh, <laughs> our planet is a little smaller than I was hoping for, but it's fine. Uh, I was hoping for... Uh, I was hoping for like 19 or 20 districts, but 17 is fine. We'll live with that. This has also changed. Uh, now, we have districts that we build for uh, population uh, holding, obviously. Uh, then generators, where we can build power rather than having buildings that build power. Uh, mining districts, and then agriculture. And these are the buildings we get should we hit a certain population threshold. And we can build different buildings like the research labs, the alloy foundries, civilian industries, and a lot more. A whole lot more. <laughs> but they will unlock more as time goes on, as we research more, and population increases so we can actually do that. But that is a later thing that no in no way can we do right now. So, let us continue at the fastest speed. All right. Ships so refitted. far, so good. Yep. Crown Princess Valentina is a new heir to our empire and will take the throne when our current ruler dies. Not the name I would have chosen, but hey! All hail Valentina! All right. Had to take a drink of tea again. All right, and it's been fully upgraded, and we're good. Beautiful. There's that. Finished the construction queue, which was upgrading the fleet, and that was it. And that's that, and that, and that. Good. Now we continue on. 
everyone up to speed now? Everyone up to speed since I did all of that? I hope so. Because it's going to get more complicated as time goes on, let me tell you. All right, I had realized just now I haven't set my uh, science ship to do anything. I'm an idiot. Okay, um... Hmm. Let's have it... Let's have Sir Nigel Pemberton the second uh, explore this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Circle back to do this, that, that, and then go this way. And there seems to be a little direction that goes this way. I wonder if it... It probably should lead to that, but... Mm, give me a second. Throat was starting to die on me. I apologize. Um, it had... It has a direction going that way, but it won't let me... Cue that as a surveyable system yet. So, we'll, we'll wait on that. In the meantime, what can I do? I can't build all the mining stations in the system yet. Uh, at least until I bring in all the resources I can to do that. Which should be next month. And there. Alright. Now I can set it up where he builds all the mining stations to pick up uh, energy and minerals in our home system. And finally tap our moon, which for some reason they weren't doing. But now they will. And then... Yeah, we're doing pretty good. We have recovered artifacts from an ancient civilization on Restless One. Huh. Incredibly, this civilization, which... Apparently referred to itself as the Cybrex, seems to have been made up of machines that were linked together in some sort of collective consciousness. The age of the artifacts indicate that they were active some 600,000 years ago, in this portion of the galaxy at least, but we have learned nothing of their exact origins. According to the, a partial data fragment, <laughs> fragment, <laughs> mouth, work with me here, that our scientists managed to extract from one of the artifacts, the Cybrex at some point lost, launched a crusade to destroy all sapient organic life in the galaxy for reasons unknown. New Interesting. And that is our new first thing. Precursors. The Cybrex. That is actually something that was added to uh, the game in recent DLCs and recent updates. Um... Cybrex is a machine race, which is now an acceptable thing to make. Uh, your civilizations, civilizations, uh, if you want to. That is up to you. That's not how I roll, but it is a thing you can do. So there's that. Weeks after the ISS Wanderer's latest fruitful exploration survey... Felinian xenologists are practically falling over themselves to publish their takes on the findings of Restless One. This fevered storm in the scientific community has had some negatives, yet temporary, impacts on pursuits in other fields. Remarkable. Get used to this site, because this is all we're going to be seeing for a while. <laughs> At least until later game, when our empire has spanned as far as it'll go. And then we take from the rest of them. If we have to. If we have to. Key phrase. Um, let's actually... There's an edict I can do. Yes. Edicts is what you can spend your influence on uh, to get particular benefits. Like with Map the Stars, for instance. That will last for 13 years, increase our survey speed, and earn anomaly discovery chance. It's a small amount, but still useful. So we do it. Costs us 90, usually would cost 100, but with eh, my uh, little perk there, doesn't cost that much. And all of this is other stuff. This is our, these are 
strategic resources that would also help us in certain aspects if we spent it. A volatile land clearance, crystalline sensors, exotic gases as fuel, and shield boost. Uh, volatile ammunition, explosives, reactive armor, and focusing crystals. We'll go over those when we get to it. But, so far so good. We're not doing too badly. Oh, I might as well let that roll. And after he's done with that, I'm going to have him go back to the spaceport. That way he's not using up a lot of our credits for energy anomaly as sound. time goes on. Ooh. Okay, there's an anomaly. There is significant scarring on the surface of this world in a pattern that cannot be natural. From orbit, the massive rifts look almost like writing. Look into it. And that was it completing the mining, so it's good. Actually, you know what? Now we have enough minerals to focus on the research stations. And then after that, it can go to the spaceport and wait for my next order. Oh, shit. <laughs> We're a little over time. I uh, just noticed now. Uh, so, yeah, we'll just end this episode here for right now. Thank you all so much for watching. Click the... <laughs> wow, I haven't done this outro in a damn long time. Can you tell this is my first episode since I've been back to recording? <laughs> wow. All right. Thank you all so much for watching. Click the subscribe button if you like these videos and you want to see more. And click the like button if you like this particular video. And share and comment so we can bring more people into this community. We can talk about the games we're playing together. And I will see you all in the next episode. There we go. It was almost as if I practiced it forever. <laughs> Which I did for a while. Uh... <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I, I kind of threw off my own thought process, uh, patting my own back. <laughs> I will see you all in the next episode. This has been the one, the only Stray Cat playing games, starting our new empire as far as it'll go, if it'll let me, for you. <laughs>